Happy rails to you. Welcome back, my friends. Happy rails to you. It's good to see you again. Happy rails to you. Glad you're watching. Well, hello, everybody. This is G-Man, My World 67. Uh, well, I don't have a layout update for you on today uh, in this video, but there is an update video coming up. Um, but right now today, I thought, or at least at this moment, I thought I would show you uh, a project that I started working on a couple of days ago. Going through um, some more of my old boxes, um, I ran across a couple of boxes that um, my foster brother had sent me um, a few years ago. And uh, it's mostly junk. These are junk boxes, uh, stuff that possibly can be used for parts or are repaired. In there, I found this engine. Now, this uh, is an American Flyer S gauge PA, and someone had taken it and repainted it and actually gutted it and did a custom job on it, not just with the paint. Uh, but they also uh, built a kind of a prototype. It's actually one that I had an idea uh, to build, not necessarily in this, this road name, although I do kind of like that idea. Um, but uh, this has a uh, single drive uh rear truck uh, and it's rear powered it does not swivel and uh, of course the front still does but um, I don't know whether they, they built it and actually ran it and got tired of it or it had quit running and they didn't want to fool with it anymore or it didn't actually work but uh, as I, it kind of intrigued me, so I went ahead and pulled it out and started tearing it apart and working on it. And I found a number of things that uh, I needed to adjust. And uh, I got it running again. It does run. Uh, and what they've done is they've used a... Uh, locomotive a steam locomotive motor out of one of the later 1960s engines uh the jack uh, rather uh production american flyer um and uh, so it, it doesn't have a lot of power um and i might change it out uh again a little later on they had it marked as a DC motor, and of course, it's not a DC motor. Uh, but anyway, it does not reverse. Uh, they've got the E unit fixed so that it doesn't work. Um, it just goes forward, which is okay. Um, and um, that's about it. Uh, there's no light in it. And uh, I'm going to put a light in it. At least that's part of the plan. Um, and I, and I, as I say, I got it. I took it apart, got it, got it running again, uh, put it back together. And it, this is also uh, picks up its current from a tender. Now, here's what they did. If I can get this all in the screen. A 
know whether you can see it or not. Let's try that. Picture's a little dark. Okay. Well, we can't really get a good view of it that way. Having trouble here getting the camera to cooperate. Okay. Here we go. That's not very really good either, is it? can't get enough light behind me there we go so they use the tinder uh, to actually pick up the current and it was a great idea it, it, it's a great idea I'm still gonna use the same idea um, I just didn't like the tinder idea being pulled behind the diesel engine Although you do see that now and then, as a matter of fact, I actually saw one pulling a tender uh, just two or three weeks ago, um, and it was kind of unusual, but uh, it does happen now and then. So, but what I've done, <clears throat> this tender also had a problem, uh, I, I, I lengthened this tongue uh, to link it up to the, the PA, it was about <clears throat> almost a half an inch too short, uh, which placed it too close to the cab. And uh, so I tore it apart, <clears throat> and it had a busted wire. I just resoldered it, and uh, got it fixed. I'm going to... Uh, hot glue this in place right here so that the wires don't pull. They've got plenty of room in them so when the uh, wheels turn, it, it won't pull on the wires. And uh, we're going to put uh, some hot glue up here to keep this secured in one place. I'm going to finish this real quick, put this hot glue on here, um, trying to find an angle to set this camera up that it'll work for you. And that might be as good as any. Okay. So I'm going to take the hot glue and I'm very quickly, very carefully just going to put a little hot glue on it. I don't want to melt the insulation on the wires. I just want to hold that in place. I think maybe I'll put a little hot glue on this also. To insulate the little bare wires there. And to help keep any strain off of that solder joint. <clears throat> As I was saying, I'm no longer going to use this shell, um, this tender shell. We're going to keep that for another project. I do like what they did with that, though, and that, that was kind of inspiring. Uh, but what I've done is I've taken 
this shell, which is a smaller, it's basically an S scale shell, uh, but this is made by Scientific Toys on one of the battery operated train sets. And this is actually a little bit shorter uh, than, say, an S scale boxcar. It's about that much shorter, about an inch, inch and a half maybe, shorter uh, than a regular S scale boxcar. And um, works out great. I'm gonna paint it gray. and brown with a brown top or I might go with a dark maroon top uh, just for general prim principles and this will be um, either uh, we'll call this the generator car uh, or generator and tool car or power car or power and tool car I don't know yet uh, but one or the other. Let me show you what I did with it. As the flyer shell has extensions that you mount your screws into, there's four of them. I don't know whether you can see them good or not. I apologize for the lighting. But there's one, two, three, four. And of course, this shell didn't have that. So what I did, I took a block of wood, cut it in half. You see I have this one marked. I cut it in half, put one piece on this side, glued it in place, Glued the other one on this side. Then I put a pin or a rod, if you will, down through the side, through the block into the other block. And that helps to secure them in place, makes them stable. I did the same on both ends. And so when I mount the shell down, which we mounted here, there are four holes, one, two, three, four on the chassis. I've already drilled the holes in this. We also have a hole in the end. I want to show that to you. See that hole right there? For the wires. Put the wires through. Of course. Flip it over, line it up, what I like about it is it's a good snug fit. really just kinds of snaps in place.
but for all intents purposes, We go ahead and use the uh, the screws. Make a little adjustment here. There we go. Almost got it too far. There we go. There we go. Our screws down in. Need to get a better, little bit better screwdriver for that. <clears throat> Oops. Camera's trying to tilt over on us. There we go. Just snug them up. Don't over torque them. Okay, that gives us our cord out for the power out to the engine. Now, what I was going to point out about this was, I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but there was an extra weight, uh, a big slug of uh, heavy metal uh, added to this chassis uh, right on top of the original weight. And uh, they put that in there to give it more traction, more pull. And so I didn't, I didn't remove it um, because I wanted to make sure that uh, well, 
number one, I didn't want to tear it apart to, to get it off of there. They really put that in there good, and they did a nice job on it. And uh, I, di I didn't want to tear it apart and then find out that I really, really needed to add that weight uh, back in there. So I left it uh, as it was. Primarily, uh, this engine, as I said, was, was started originally and begun by someone else. Who the author was, I have no idea. Um, but once again, it just shows that a lot of people have the same idea, but it, uh, some of us act on it a little quicker than others or, or figure it out before others do. And that's okay because that gives us the variety that we need. Um, but when I saw this, it was like, boom, there it is, because uh, <laughs> I was planning on doing this for a project this, this winter, uh, and, and, and I already had one started. So this gives me uh, an opportunity to, uh, to improve on what someone else had done. So I did, I made some changes. Um, this flange uh, that they made back here, it was squared off, and uh, I went ahead and tapered it and rounded it off, and so that it, it, it looks better. It was just a square flange, and I, I went ahead and rounded it off. No big deal. Uh, as I said, that uh, I, I uh, cleaned the brushes and, and uh, cleaned up the uh, the motor and uh, re-oiled it and uh, got it running. It, it just really looked like it, that it was just kind of gummed up a little bit and uh, the brushes wasn't touching uh, the armature like they should have been. And so we got that done. Um, and we're working on uh, almost to the completion now of the uh, power car or the generator car. Now, uh, what they've done to hook this up, I wanted to point that out too, if you can see it. They put in a screw down here in the bottom, and this was a, the original to pull hitch uh, for for the uh, for the engine. Uh, this is actually the back side of the engine, and not the front side of the steam engine. Uh, motor. And so uh, they put up a screw up through here, which allows you to make your hitch by slipping it over top of that and putting it right down in there like that. Which is great. And this gives you a little better view of how that's going to look once it's done. Sorry about that. Now, um, as I said, I also uh, redid this tongue. They had one end that was about, uh, about a half inch, not quite a half inch shorter. And it was too short. It was making their, their hookup about like that. And it needs to be like that. Especially since this rear wheel does not turn. Now we don't have the layout yet completely cleared off. We don't have the layout yet up uh, to where uh, that, that upper level to where I can actually run this on the S gauge so we can actually test it to see how it's going to perform on curves. And that's the biggie. Uh, and that might be why they abandoned it because once they built it, um, it did not handle the curves uh, very well. But um, we shall see. Um, Hopefully, um, this week, uh, who was really busy last week off and on, uh, and hopefully this week, 
uh, today is Tuesday, um, that I'll be able to uh, get out there and, and do some more work. Now, I did have done a little work on it, um, but it wasn't enough that I felt like that you guys, um, enough to do a video. So um, you'll see those improvements in that next update, which is upcoming. And uh, very soon. Um, I don't know whether I'll get out there to work on that layout today or not, but uh, Lord willing, I definitely will be out there tomorrow and we'll be getting some more work done. Well, I'm going to go ahead and um, get this painted. Get it lettered, and uh, I'll get back to you in another short video, or a short video, uh, to wrap this engine up for now. So look for part two of this video. It's called we're going to call it the custom build, the new standard rail service. All right. Until next time, if you enjoy building, running, operating your trains, working on your layout, custom building, whatever it is that you enjoy doing, you should have happy rails. Bye for now.